Well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck. And as you can tell, I'm in the passenger seat on the road, and I'm with my friend Russ in his Jeep. It's a Sunday afternoon, uh, March 10th, 2024, and uh, Russ called me up the other day, and uh, years back we went to an Indian ruin, and Russ is trying to remember where it's at. And I told him that the best thing to do would be come pick me up, and we just drive out there. So that's where we're going. So there's my friend Russ. Say hi, Russ. Hi, Russ. <laughs> He's a, Russ is another retired fire guy. He's a, out of worked for Cal Fire out of Southern California for years and years and years, and and uh, he's uh, lived here in town now for how many years? 18, 19 years. 19 years he's lived here. So he retired. He's like me. He retired a long time ago. So uh, anyway, uh, he's got a new Jeep, and you know I try real hard to limit my exposure riding in Jeeps and the reason why I do that is because I love the darn things and I want one and uh, I told that story before but I sold my Jeep a long time ago and then uh, because of a health problem then I cured the health problem and I could have had the Jeep but uh, you gotta turn right here and uh, but so now I can't afford one but he's got a pretty nice one it's a, a newer Rubicon four-door and uh, it's pretty slick it's probably what I would have if I bought another one so we're getting ready to turn off right now here we're getting ready to turn off the highway on a back road and just got to wait here for traffic for a second so we'll get to, I'll, we'll make this turn and i'll get back with you here in a little bit when we start getting a little closer and i'll take you along on our little adventure today back in a little bit Bunch of, yeah. and we're back on the forest road that uh Travels up here along a sand wash for a while. And we're parallel in the, actually parallel in the old highway and the current highway is about, uh, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of a mile south or so of where we're at. And you can't really see anything from here. But we got a couple miles of this to go. And up there, up there. Yeah, there you go. You can stay in the wash too. Oh, can you? Yeah. Okay. But it's, that's a, it's more fun. <laughs> but either way. Either way. Yeah, it comes out up here. It ties back together. I haven't been up here in a long time. Yeah. I'm glad you remember where it's at. Oh, I remember a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, so you do have a good memory. That's uh, crazy sometimes. So we could have stayed down there in the bottom. That's the high speed lane. But this is the old original road, so we're up here. Oh, there's a got to go around the washout here. We'll we'll be back with you here in a little bit. Let me show you the washout. Let me see if I can do this without hitting a tree and getting my arm taken off. <laughs> anyway, there's behind us. There's a road. This area's got a lot of little roads like this. It's a very nice place to own a Jeep. And I sure miss mine. I just, I see, I saw one like it the other day and boy, it just hurt me deep inside. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay, now we're back in here a little ways and we got a turn off up here a little bit to go into this, this Indian ruin. And back in the, back in the early days, uh, this was uh, actually one of the primary access roads to get to the area up underneath the Mugion Rim. And uh, after they built a, the connecting road, which is called Control Road, then uh, this road here kind of fell into disrepair. And it's uh, it's still a four-wheel drive road, but the uh, rest of you stop here for just a second. Yeah, uh, pull forward about three feet. This thing up in front of us is called Little Diamond Rim. A little bit more. A little bit more. Right there. Okay. And if you look right up there on that little peak, you can see the Diamond Point Fire Lookout Tower and all the communication stuff up there. And there's actually a strobe light blinking up there. I actually saw it blink a few seconds ago and uh, for nighttime. But you get to that actually from the other side. Now, why do they call that the Little Diamond Rim? Well, they call it that because there's uh, limestone crystals up there that are called Arizona Diamonds. 
and you can find them some places just laying on the ground and people go up there looking for them and making jewelry out of them. So the, the uh, Mugion Rim itself, we're facing northbound right now, the Mugion Rim itself is actually uh, behind, behind there where you can't really see it. But uh, we're facing northbound and uh, we'll be making a turn off up here so we'll talk to you again here in a couple minutes. Monday, then go back out on Wednesday. Right. So, uh, well, Pre-run's a good idea. It is, because not so much for brushing, but for... Well, make sure it's passable. Make sure it's passable, yeah. So uh -huh. you get 12 jeeps, and all of a sudden you got to turn around. Yeah. So what I do if I'm going to lead, or like I might lead this run, um, I, I go on a run, I know I don't need brushing, and I know it's a good run. Yeah. You know, this road's always open. Got a little bit of water left. Supposed to rain on... Wednesday or Thursday again. This is what this is what Jeepin's all about, folks. No reason to be in a hurry. See if I can get an outside shot. It's probably gonna be a little windy. Let me see if I can do this. Back shortly. Okay, now we're off on a little side road down a sand wash. We're kind of headed kind of southwest right now, trying to keep you from getting too much into the sun here. But, uh, Russ is plotting that on his on his phone so he can keep track of it, so he can come in here, find this place again. It's pretty narrow. This little road here obviously hasn't had the brush cut back. We always refer to that as giving the road a haircut. That's why uh, anybody that really uses their Jeep for what it's meant for, in this kind of country, they're always all scratched up with brush scratches and stuff. And Arizona uh, pinstriping. We call it Arizona pinstriping. Yep, we all we all had it. It's real hard to... If you see one that's real pristine, that's not all scratched up, you know that it's a mall crawler. But uh, we got a little turn off up here real soon. I'll, keep, I'll let the camera run here for a couple of minutes. And see how narrow this is. You wouldn't want to come in here with anything very big. Right there. So I drive up there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And here's our here's our turnoff right over there. And that would have been the hard one to try to explain to Russ where it was at. Yeah. Trying to hold the camera steady, but it's pretty hard to do. We're bouncing around a lot. You guys always tease me because the one thing I've been blessed with in my life is a good memory, and I can be on a road and Go on a road and 20 years later remember where it's at and that's exactly what's going on here today. It hasn't been 20 years, but it's been quite a while. And this doesn't go up in here very far. There's a little, be a little open area to park. You can fit five or six Jeeps in here. And then we got to walk a little bit. We always used to joke on rides like on roads like this that they paid extra for turns. But what happened is somebody managed to sneak away in here and gradually over a period of time it became a road. Okay, this is the end of the line. We'll park here. Yeah, you would have had a hard time coming over to... Now we're going to get out of the Jeep. We're going to walk for a little bit. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on here in just a few minutes. 
Well, the first things we run onto are these things here. They're called matats. And that's where the, uh, the ancient people used to grind the pine nuts and grind their corn and stuff. And they, had a little, uh, they used a little grinding stone called a mono. And there's some more of those up here. I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I've been here. Here's a good one right over here. It's even still got a little bit of water in it from recent rain. Can you imagine some Indian woman sitting there for hours and hours and hours and grinding meal there. There's Here's another one right here. It's got water in it from the rain as well. And here's a couple more right there. And we're at the we're at the edge of this little canyon. There's some little overhangs right underneath this, and I'm sure that the native peoples took shelter in these little overhangs. Let me give you a quick pan around here. Isn't this gorgeous country? Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Those mountains in the distance are the Matazels, and they still got a little bit of snow on them. So uh, we're gonna work our way across these rocks over here and uh, head up this direction a little bit further. I'll let this run. Here's uh, there's more matats. There's two more, there's another one. There's a couple more right over here in the shade. It's obvious that native people lived here for a long time and used these things for many, many, many years. So we're getting pretty close actually to the what we came here for. It's right around here through the right around here through the trees. We'll just let this thing run for a little bit. Our area here has a very temperate climate that's just about perfect and so as a result the native people lived here for probably thousands of years before we ever came along and these uh, types of ruins like this are, can be found in a lot of places throughout the area and here we are Forest Service has even been in here put up a little sign let me get a zoom in on that. You can pause that and read it if you like. But uh, right here is Indian ruins. You can see their pit houses. You can see the circular shape here. They dug them into the ground. And then they put brush roofs over them. We're standing in one. There's one over there. There's one over here. back around here so I can get you get the light better some of these these have probably initially been excavated by the Forest Service folks and but you can see there where there's still quite a bit of evidence of walls and this goes on back around here for a little while this is the main the main part of it that does we're right uh, well, well I'll take you back up here on the next little overlook up here Russ is on the lookout here for pottery yes right Look at that track there. Huh. I'm not even sure what that is. That might be a cat track. If you notice, if it was, dog, if it was a coyote or something, it would have right. claw marks. Right. There's no claw marks. That might actually be a cat track. Just, uh, we'll walk over here and give you a, a peek off to the side. All these rocks are covered by lichens, that lichen growth. That's why they turn them green. There we go. You can see down in the bottom of the canyon over there and town is back over that direction. You might be able to see some rooftops. 
But look at this, look at the cliffs on this thing. Isn't this gorgeous? That Mayfield Canyon? This is, yeah, this is Mayfield Canyon, called Mayfield Canyon. Look how that one cracked and separated. You can actually look down in there between the two of them. You can hop over there on top of that rock. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I think it's been there for thousands of years. Yeah, we're looking back. We were standing down there before, down that way a little bit. But isn't this a gorgeous piece of country? You've got the same kind of cliffs on the other side, and there's ruins over there too. And then there's some more down in the bottom toward the outlet of the canyon. So, let me, uh, we saw what we came for. We're going to look around a little bit more. If I see something else, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you. But right now, I think I'm going to close this one. And I'm going to tell you, like I always do, take care of each other and love each other. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful life. Get out and take a walk in nature if you get a chance. Uh, it'll do us all a little bit of good. And so until I see you again, I'll give you one more look down this canyon. And I'll tell you, for now, peace out.